Hey ho neighbors, Rado Goji here. And I'm Soylent Greg. And welcome to Squeeze the World Gaming, and I am, uh, I saw. And I'm, uh, really, really excited, um, to be playing this. This is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, uh, which is my favorite game of all time. We're playing Woo! the deluxe Game Boy Color version. Um, uh, although, it, I will, I will admit this actually isn't my copy of the game. <laughs> um, uh, I own the... As far as cartridges go, I own the original black and white version. I actually borrowed this from a friend of mine like 10 years ago because I wanted to see what the Game Boy Color version was like in comparison. And I never got a chance to give it back to him. So I, I figure I should probably give it back to him when we're done with this. If he even still cares that I have it. But look at the pretty colors, though. I was actually given my copy of uh, Link's Awakening as well. I went to a party when I was like nine. Uh, that my parents went to at this incredibly rich person's house. And um, their kids, uh, they had all sorts of shit. They had like a pinball machine and all this shit. And they just gave me uh, Link's Awakening because I, I saw it. Uh, I, I got my original copy um, for my birthday uh, when I was still living up in Minnesota. My friend, I, bar I had borrowed my friend's copy of it at one point. It like, became like my favorite game, so he got me a copy of it from like, Funko Land. Sweet. Uh, what should our name be? Whatever you'd like. So this is this is uh, the flip side of the Super Metroid uh, playthrough. This is Patrick's very favorite game yep. of all time. Um, Mr. Rado. So why is it? Why is Link's Awakening your favorite game of all time? It's one of those situations where um, I just do like I just like it so much. I think it's just because of all the nostalgia and all the, the history I have with the game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really any one thing. Um, that uh, uh, surrounding it that makes me like it. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I do also credit it for me being more portable centric in my um, my gaming life. I guess that's absolutely fair. Uh, because there was just so much going on in this game, and it, just to have all that in one cartridge and be able to take it with me wherever I wanted to go uh, was uh, like a super cool thing to me back in the day. Portable gaming owns. It I does. Mean, I, I'm playing Persona Five right now, and as much as I I love it, and it's 110% my game of the year. I do wish I was able to play it on the PlayStation Vita. And yes, I know I can remote play it. <laughs> I was about to say, you can remote it's play it. It's not the same thing as carrying Persona 4 Golden around with you. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> and what a relief. I thought you'd never wake up. You were tossing and turning. What? Zelda? No, my name's Mary. You must be feeling, still feeling a little woozy. You are on the hole in Thailand. Or Kohol in Thailand. I've always thought of Kohol in Thailand. It's Kakairako. <laughs> Actually, it is Kakariko. In Breath of the Wild, they pronounce <laughs> they say it. it. They say I it. know, I know. I I watched part of your um, your the stream. You're thing. farther ahead of it in it than I am. Oh wow! I didn't think I. Was... I also got to the the Kakariko. But parts. I'm 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 sure you've also been playing more Persona Five than anything now. So yeah, I've kind of been doing that. The Wii U is kind of my kids, you know, thing. Oh, gotcha. So I've been more playing Persona. Right, this is Taryn, this is um, Marin's father, and he's going to give us a sp uh, uh, very important item. See, how he's, we're wondering, how does he know our, our name? Well, it's on the back of our shield. And he gave us our shield back. I like that Zelda put our name on the back of our shield like we're like a kid with, you know... Link is a kid. Our, our, our names on our clothing. Yeah. Um... Are they gonna? They're gonna see this overlay on the thing. Oh, the the little metal thing around it. Yes, yes. that's okay. That's yeah, part of the Game Boy Player. We're playing it on a GameCube with the Game Boy Player. Yes. Uh, and I should probably get this out of the way. I will be getting pretty much everything I can possibly do in the game. I'll be uncovering all the maps, uh, getting all the treasures. It is your favorite game. I'm perfectly fine with you going no CD with it. And in all honesty, it's really not going to add that much more time, so it's still going to go at a decent pace, I think. Fair enough. Um, yeah, neither of these games... I, I don't know what it says about us, that neither of these games are terribly long. Um, other than it certainly... I mean, it partially influenced my decision to pick Super Metroid because it would be much more annoying to... LP Persona 4 Golden. Oh god. <laughs> we could we could do that what for some point in the future, but like 
I don't know. We're just working on smaller games now, I guess. Yeah, I think so. There's a chain chomp. His name is Bow Wow. I was happy when I found uh, when I saw Bow Wow was in Hyrule Warriors. Yes, he is, isn't he? And he's a uh, a whole uh, on loan from the Mario series. This was back when. Uh, Mario and Zelda uh, borrowed things from each other. Well, this borrows um, this borrows more from Zelda than um, than any other Zelda game. This borrows more from Mario than any other Zelda game does. I think we're gonna see. I mean, Terran um, is actually a, uh, a, a basically a dead ringer for Mario. That was not my timer, by the way. I know. Um, we don't really have to go that way at the moment. Also, there are Goombas in the game, aren't there? Yes, there are Goombas, there's Cheep Cheeps, there's Piranha Plants, um... There's another guy in the game somewhere, we'll see him a lot later on, he looks like Luigi. Uh, Wart from, uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 is in the game. Um, yeah, actually, um, probably should be explaining some other stuff about the game here. When I got the shield, it's actually equipped to a button. Um, one of the things that I really like about this game is how they're basically able to take all of the... Uh, functionality, like the gameplay functionality from A Link to the Past, mm -hmm. and put it into a game with, with basically two buttons. Um, both the A and B button, um... Oh god, I, I have like a whole spiel for this, but I'm gonna go talk to him first. The Owl. Yes, this game introduced the Talking Owl uh, motif in Zelda, which would go on to annoy the crap out of everyone in Ocarina of Time. Now, to be on, to be, or to be fair, I don't think he ever asks you if you want to hear what he said again. <laughs> if he does, it certainly doesn't have yes highlighted by default. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, what he's saying is that in order to be able to leave the island and go home, we need to wake this thing called the Windfish. And in order to get that, our collection MacGuffins are called the Instruments of the Sirens. So that's what we're going to be getting from the uh, dungeons. Um, we got our sword back here. Um, but if we ever do he want to hear what the uh, owl said again, uh, I'll show this once. Link has his name on all of his stuff, by the way. Yeah, he does. Actually, I'm go ahead and swap the buttons around, because both the buttons are equipable items now, mm -hmm. instead of just one. That's great. It allows you to fully customize, um... Yeah. And you also don't have to have your sword on if you don't want to. Yeah, you can just run around with, you know... Which, which makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, you so, shouldn't have to have your sword out all the time. So yeah, if you ever want to hear what the owl said again, if you have like an owl icon there, just mm -hmm. I'm not gonna hit it, but um, on the map. Shit, man. Really? Yeah, you can. What? I had no idea. Why you? Uh, that you could listen to the owl again? Yeah. So if he gives you a hint or something what? like that, because he shows up a lot more often than the, than the owl in Ocarina of Time, and uh, he basically does tell you where you need to go next, like every time you beat a dungeon. Yeah, he does show up quite a bit. Um. But about the uh, the controls and everything, um, basically, I, I like to I like to uh, put it this way. Um, back when uh, we had Zelda on the NES, mm -hmm. you basically have a controller with a control pad, two buttons, start and select. Yes. Um, and you had you know your the the A button was locked to the sword, the B button was whatever item that you wanted to equip to it. Uh, start was bringing up a a menu the the, the, the menu like this. Mm -hmm. And select did uh, I think it just paused, which was actually kind of useless because the sub menu also paused. Then you get to a link to the past, and you have more buttons that you can use. So like you have a button that will do like talking to people and shit. You have a button for your story, you have a button for items, mm -hmm. as we've seen. You have a button for your map. But everything that that is on in it, all, all that stuff from link to the past is on the same control scheme as like an NES controller. So. Both A and B buttons are any kind of weapons now, and a lot of stuff that's automatically equipped are put into buttons. We'll see more of that as we go along. Um, you got your select button, brings up your map, and of course, subscreen start. So they're able to make all of that happen. Also, the action icon for talking to people and stuff is also the A button. Hmm. So they were basically able to boil down a 16-bit game worth of control scheme into a very basic two-button uh, setup. Yeah, and they pretty much had to do that because in its like earliest stages of development, Link's Awakening was actually meant to be a Game Boy port of A Link to the Past. It's just over time, uh, it eventually just kind of became its own thing. Um, really? Mm hmm And um, when they were coming up with the story, uh, oddly enough, I don't really see too much of the similarity, but they said one of the... Um, 
major influences for the story was Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. hmm. I'd have to look up more of a detail on that, but... Well, Twin Peaks was huge in Japan. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, there was even an entire uh, Japanese... You should watch them there on YouTube. Uh, an entire series of Japanese uh, coffee commercials with the Twin Peaks cast, oh. which are fantastic. Uh, and I highly recommend watching. Oh, it, 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 does the cast include Kyle MacLachlan? Yes. Because, okay. Oh, yes. Because Kyle MacLachlan oh, yes. is, is, seems... Uh, he seems like a pretty awesome guy. Um, but yeah, uh, what we picked up here is a secret seashell. Mm -hmm. um, and we unleashed some bugs in the world, apparently. Oh, yeah, well, they're, they're just there. Um, secret seashells are one of the big collectibles in the, in the game. They will give us a nice thing once we get 20 of them. Um, but the nice thing is, um, another nice thing is that there are actually more than 20 seashells in the game. Okay. So if you miss any somewhere, that you can always, like, you know, pick up again later. Uh, and then once you get the thing, all of the, um, the seashell, seashells, the seashells you hadn't gotten. <laughs> By the seashore? Yeah. Will turn into, uh, basically turn into rupees or whatever. I think I need to ask the, the question everybody wants to know. Oh, I don't want to go here yet. Uh, will you be stealing from the store? I will do that in an extra video. <laughs> because it does actually kind of affect something from the uh, Game Boy Color version. Uh, but that will be after we've actually beaten the game. Okay. Uh, I, when I was an impressionable young lad, uh, I stole everything from the store. Uh, not literally, not physically, but in Zelda, I stole everything from the <laughs> Zelda store. Uh, and some interesting, some interesting things happen to the game, uh, when you steal from the store. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see all it's that. It's worth checking out. Uh, I'm going to into this crane game here for the Yoshi doll. This is actually the first Zelda game that introduced a trading sequence into the game. And it's the first Zelda game to introduce Yoshi, which, as we were talking about, is another Mario thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, but the trading sequence... Um, in most games, the trading sequence will give you something optional. That's something that's, something that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, in this game, you do have to do it for two reasons in the entire story. Because one, um, mm -hmm. at one point in the middle of the trading sequence is actually how you... You have to swap items in order to be able to progress. Okay. And then, in order to be able I to... I vaguely remember that. In order to be able to beat the game, you actually have to get an, an item in order to be able to find out something I'll show you later. Okay. Um, we got the Yoshi doll here. That's the start of the trading sequence. You get the Yoshi doll from the Crane game. Then you go up here, back in that house I was just in, and um, this lady was saying stuff about um, her, her baby. babies like, like Yoshi dolls. Or Yoshi. So... Damn, parents always just demanding things to give to their babies. That baby's not even going to appreciate the, uh, the Yoshi doll. So we got a ribbon. And we can give the ribbon... So we're, we're already, um... Knee-deep in it. Um, pretty much. We can get, like, uh, the, like basically the next two items, and then that item we won't be using until, like, much later. But mm -hmm. this uh, baby dog in the doghouse... Saying she wants um, to be pretty, so she wants the ribbon. Sure, hideous monster, you can have this ribbon for some dog food. So she gives us dog food. But and no can open. Nope. Um, but uh, there's a person down on the uh, on the beach. Um, I know we really haven't you know, talked to a lot of people and whatnot, just trust me on this. <laughs> Um, there's an alligator who lives down here, who, um, in one of the houses. <laughs> so there's an alligator who lives down on the beach. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's where he would live. And he, he, when you talk to him, he says that he mentions that, he, like, while he has banana, like a lot of bananas, he really likes canned food. So, um, well, that, that would be him. <laughs> now, is that a Donkey Kong Country reference? I don't. He looks know. similar to the the he doesn't, crocodile people from. Kinda. Well, he has like a fancy hat, and you know, he's his head it's, looks the same. What, what yeah. So he eats the can and all. He just eats straight up. And um, so the Link is actually the principal form of uh, barter marketing for Kohola Dial. Yeah. I also like the the small detail, by the way, that the. Uh, the crocodile man sleeps in a bed surrounded by water. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, we, had, we got a piece of heart earlier from the well. 
much like in A Link to the Past. Now I really want to see what a re an, an entirety of uh, Link to the Past would look like in this graphics engine. That'd be interesting, yeah. Even the, the trees even look similar. I think that the main, I think the trees actually looked even more similar back in the original black and white version. Mm -hmm. They did change a few things here and there, oh. but oh. it's me, the plot owl. Glad your quest to wake the dreamer. Welcome to Mysterious Woods, or Mysterious Forest, as it called it earlier. No, the dreamers are, are <laughs> from a different game we LP'd. Which one? I'm Undertale. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, flavor text, flavor text, flavor text. Yes, we know. Yeah, we, in order to be able to leave, we need to wake the windfish. There are actually uh, t several different owls. That's why they repeat themselves. Oh, this gotcha. is not the same owl that told us about the windfish. So basically, he's um, he's saying that in the in the forest here, we're going to be able to find the key to the first dungeon. Um, I should I should probably like mention some of the backstory for the game too. Uh, this is actually some sort of kind of related to a Link to the Past story wise. Um, after Link defeats Ganon, um, you know, and all well, that stuff. Many times. Well, they're all different links throughout the throughout the history, but right. a link to the past link. After he defeats Ganon, he goes out on like some in order to basically prepare himself better for when something if something bad should ever happen again to Hyrule, he goes off on a journey of enlightenment, which is actually chronicled in the Oracles games um, that, that were released later on. And then on his way back to Hyrule after that was done, uh, he got shipwrecked and ended up on this island. And now he can't leave until he wakes the windfish. So Link is Odysseus, basically, is what you're saying. In a way, sort of, yeah. Except with less Cyclopses. We got a piece of power. Um, this is one of two uh, special power-ups that's only in this game. Uh, what the piece of power does, it lasts for until you take a certain number of hits. Uh, it gives us double sword damage. Um, the any kind of sword strikes that we do will knock an enemy oh, back wow. like that. And we also have increased movement speed. That's pretty badass. I would keep it. I mean, I'm sure uh, speedrunners of this game get that and then just keep the heightened movement speed for as long as possible. Well, Actually, it also wears off when you enter a cave or anything like that. I'm sure speedrunners just use the map glitch to warp down to the windfish and then kill the boss. Well, yeah, in, in, in the original version, yeah, they actually took the map glitch out of this version. What? Yeah. Why would you take... Why, why do you hate fun? <laughs> there, are, there are some other glitches, like glitch worlds and whatnot, but... As a raccoon, my nose is very sensitive to stuff like dust and powder. Okay. But if you try to go up, then you'll get lost, thanks to me. Haha, <laughs> I'm a dick raccoon. Yeah, so he basically teleported us. Um, this is where we were. Mm. And he teleported... No, this is where we were. And he teleported us down here. So it's kind of like the Lost Woods. Oh. Mysterious forest. So there's kind of a parallel there, too. So, um, what we have to do is, uh, because he said his nose is very sensitive to stuff like powder, we have to find, a, like, some kind of dust or powder, because that's where the key is, and that's, like, right above him. Wasn't there some powder in that, um, brain game? There was, but, um, I'm going to, uh... There's a much easier way to get some. Oh, okay. And I'm going to do that, because the crane game can... Unless you're getting the Yoshi doll, which is... You know, a static, static, static thing, and yeah. you can just grab it. Grabbing anything else from that crane game is kind of tough, so I'm not even gonna bother. Fair enough. Oh, here's the other uh, power up: the Guardian Acorn. Guardian Acorn. It basically gives you a double defense, and it plays the same ditty. Okay, so we were oh, thinking, shit. we were thinking, uh, you know, for the the power, uh, something looks like the Triforce, but it's glowy. It powers Link up. Oh, cool. That that makes sense. What about for, like, defense? Oh, we were thinking an acorn. Brilliant. Go <laughs> with it. We got 50 rupees, and we're going to be using those a little bit later. Um, basically, the, when all the rupees I'm going to be getting, we, we'll be able to afford, like, everything that we need in the shop, because there's only, like, a couple of things that we actually have to buy. Mm -hmm. um, so, for the most part, money is, for the most part, useless, but mm -hmm. there are a couple of things that you're going to need that you actually have to buy, so. Okay. So we got an, a mushroom, so you can pretty much um, tell where this is going. Did the timer go off? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'll, we'll go ahead and uh, cap the uh, the video here, and um, when we come back,
we just got this mushroom, uh, and we, if you've played A Link to the Past, you pretty much know where this little plot thread is going. So, until then, I've been Raido Goji. And I'm Sterling Greg. And we'll be here next time. Join us, won't you?